Hello my friends, my name is Darren from RC Scale Models and today we have another kit review. This one's from Ravel, um, 148 scale, Fucker Wolf TA-154. It's an uh, aircraft known as, the, basically it's the German version of their Mosquito, German Mosquito, um, as a nickname. It's one of the, uh, my understanding, one of the first aircraft to have night vision radar um, and it flies around at night time taking out the uh, British bombers and the Allied bombers and um, this is what this funny contraption is on the front is the giant uh, radar system um, the original kit came out back in 1909 from monogram uh, with, and basically which is Ravel as well today Ravel monogram um, this version here you see with the blue box from the Ravel itself it directly instead of monogram just Ravel was released between 95 uh, no sorry not 95 2005 thereabouts or give or take um, the uh, aircraft length is 26.2 centimeters wingspan of 33.2 centimeters the kit number is 04535 like I said, 148 scale. It's from Ravel. This side of the box, it's one of their older kits now. Um, we have the pre painted model built up by someone. Uh, they have a skill level 4. Cost of £25. I didn't pay £25 for it, I only paid £20. Uh, history and the kit number and stuff. It's a typical. Uh, side opening box I'm never a fan of their boxes because I find them really flimsy and you can't put too many other kits on top and they would just squash and whatever you have the decals one giant bag of plastic instructions I haven't actually looked at this kit yet so we're going to be both looking at it together at the same time as always we start with the worksheet and decals we have the decals uh, they're, they're okay they're on the flat side um, doesn't actually say who they're printed by this says they're printed in Italy I'm not sure if they cartograph um, most more likely they may be um, but they should be okay there's only one set of markings in this is what you see which is the TQ XE version serial number um, and the the camouflage is German light grey and German dark grey. Um, unfortunately, uh, if you wish to do other markings, you're going to have to find aftermarket decals and stuff. So here's the information on the Mosquito, if you wish to read it. That's in German, I believe that side. And this is English. It's the old style kit, um, none of their new instructions, it's the uh, horrible paper I find, like photocopy job. Um, loads of history, colours is required, it's going to be obviously Ravel colours, um, so you're going to have to do your references. And they acquire colour mixes, but again... There's probably other manufacturers already out there that already got the colours already made. So first step is sprue. There's only a couple of sprues in the kit. It's a quite detailed but quite simple kit to build. First section is working on the cockpit tub, instrument um, dials and stuff. Um, It'd be the throttle lever and stuff and then the instrument panel itself there is no deck or anything it's uh, my understanding is quite detailed so it's going to require the um, painting technique and dry brushing and whatever unless you wish to go down the edward set and get the um aftermarket stuff for it um which you can do i have a couple of aftermarket stuff for this wheels exhausts and 
yeah, just the wheels and exhaust. Um, oh, and some aftermarket seat belts, um, just general Luftwaffe seat belts. There's no uh, actual seat belts out for this kit, so I've just gone for the basic Luftwaffe aircraft fighter set. So it requires a couple of these belts just to fit in, in the seats. And probably not completely accurate, but it's going to be close enough. Dropping your seats down after painting and whatever, the back firewall behind the seats. And we have the instrument binnacle painting on the inside of the uh, fuselage halves, sandwiching it together like a typical uh, aircraft from World War II. The side pieces going in as well. We have the rudder, uh, two piece. I'm not sure if you can have it opposable. We have the wings. Again, the flaps are already fixed in place, unfortunately. We have the uh, engine nacelles, basic engine, engine firewall, and engine nacelle part again. Very simple, but the detail is quite good. More engine nacelles, which consist of the uh, inside of the landing gear segments as well. Um, it's asking for 50 grams of nose weight in each na engine nacelle behind the engine. But again, me, pack as much as you can in there, because no doubt. If they're asking for nose weight, it's going to be a tail sitter otherwise. Landing gear segments, again two piece wheels. I'm never a fan of two piece wheels because I uh, just hate them so I always buy my resin wheels. So I've got resin wheels for this. The uh, propeller system which is a nose cone, three blade with propeller separately. Goes into a small jig which you have to glue mid to place. Don't glue the back part on. So it allows the propellers to spin if you wish to do that. The um, propellers would be the typical German green-brown colour. Which is um, RML 66, is it? Something like that. Whatever it is. Um, and then dropping in landing gear in. Again, I'll leave that until towards the end. The door's going on. Your wings going on. Don't forget to leave the gap because that's where the engine nacelles go into. Drilling out a couple of holes for some pitot tubes and stuff. Doing the other side of the wing. Dropping the engine nacelles in. Exhaust system. Again, I've got resin replacements. It's a little bit more detail. Uh, left and right engines. Front of the aircraft again. You've got the front wheel. Um, assembly, landing gear doors going on, um, and the landing front landing gear going in as well. Part of the nose system is part of the landing gear as well. Again, so nose and part of the uh, landing gear door. You have the canopy going in in the closed position. If you have it in the open position, you can do so because it's on the other page, if I'm not mistaken. No, but I have seen the the kit with the uh, um, canopy open, I have seen it done. Um, landing lights coming in and whatever. Touching the wings. We have some more pitot tubes. I'm not sure what these pieces are at the top. Then we've got this complex radar system. Hopefully the plastic parts are not too thick. Um, I was looking at to try and find the uh, photo etch version of that. So the arrows have been nice and thin. But I couldn't see... Um, anything out there so I'm gonna to have to deal with the plastic hopefully like I mentioned as long as it's not too thick making sure it's all square but just be careful once this is built because it's going to be quite fragile and it can be easily knocked and broken and it goes on to the basic um, painting assembly um, it's asking for RML 60 uh, RML 76 which is a light grey RML 75 which is a little bit darker um, and then you've got your markings and stencil data. Um, so we have one giant bag of plastic. It's strange though, the kit's made in Germany, but it's a Ravel. Um, and now I thought um, Ravel was German, so it's strange that it's made in, uh, in China.
So what they look like they've done is bags within a bag, so we have separate sprues. So that's what that's okay. That is nicely done. So let's take a look at this first one. And there's the clear as well. So here's the main sprue of the future rod halves. We have cockpit floor, wheels, nose cone, instrument binnacle, sides, landing gear segment, landing gear doors. So again, like I mentioned, the detail is pretty good. It's quite smooth in some parts, but you've got a nice panel line there. I think it was, there is no hardly any rivets, but it is, the detail is still quite good though, I think. A um, couple of rivets around here. Like I say, it is an old monogram kit, so the detail is, is good for its age. That's what I'm saying. It's not not perfect. The front wheel is moulded as one piece, um, but again, I've got replacement resin wheels, so it doesn't really matter. Um, there's no tread pattern on the wheels. The under gear floor looks pretty good. The instrument pan binnacles look decent. It's like I say, dry brushing technique and whatever needs to be done, you're all right. Part of the landing gear segments, inside tonal parts, instrument binnacle, or cockpit area. This is copper area aerials again the other side of the future large it's not a very big aircraft there's that nose cone that probably looks like that was slide molded um This is the uh, framing for the uh, aerial system on the front. That doesn't look too bad, these arms. Um, we've got a couple of ejector pins, but they're all hidden. I'm not going to really see any of those stuff. There's a landing gear segment inside the wheel well. A couple of ejector pins on the inside there. Um, I don't know. That's okay, though. I've never built a monogram kit before. I've done Ravel kits in the past, but not actually a monogram. Mm -hmm. Wings. So again, we have the locating pins, jet to pins inside. It's all be all good because you're not going to see any of those covered up. Here's the wing detail again, it's nice and smooth, but there's no rivets, it's just panel lines. Um, there's a couple of rivets there, but not a lot. Some detail around the uh, engine part, I think it's looked pretty good for its age. It's like twenty years old now. There else. We have two of these. So we have wheels. Again, I've got replacement engine nacelles, engine covers. Engine's quite very basic exhaust system. There's the radar system, engine covers, wings, and there's more exhaust system. We have these pieces. Um, I say you have to drill them out if you haven't got replacement, but I've got resin so it's more cleaner and crisper and hollowed out. Um, wings, landing gear segments, two-piece wheels like I mentioned before, never a fan of. Landing gear 
doors again because it's um, is that the landing gear door? Possibly if that's a landing gear door and you've got it open you're gonna have to slice down the center. Landing gear segments don't look too bad. Here's part of the landing gear system. There's landing gear segment. Engine cowling don't look too bad. Just the back firewall. The engine looks quite I don't know, very rough and uh, very basic. But I don't think you're going to see an awful lot inside the cowling anyway. But two piece other engine pieces again. I've got resin ones which are uh, molded is much better and it, it's going to be easier to do without having that uh, seam line to take care of. Here's that radar system I was worried about being too thick, but that actually doesn't look too bad. <clears throat> Propeller nose cone, it's got a centre piece out of it. There's the propellers, they don't look too bad neither. Pretty good for its age, and like I mentioned before, it looks alright. Engine nacelles or covers, one of your seats, again, it hasn't got any seat belts, but I've got aftermarket to go in there anyway. And there's those pins for the uh, propeller system to spin. But that don't look too bad. That looks pretty good. And last sprue, we have more engine nacelles and landing gear segments. So here's engine nacelles again and landing gear parts both put together like one piece two two halves um so you're gonna have to uh, take care of the seam line a little bit there's no detail on the inside the wheel wells um so maybe a scratch building or however you want to do it these are parts of the landing gear i think this is the part of the front nose wheel there's part of the landing gear you have the sides of the uh, aircraft where the guns come out of and we have your rudder, it has that fabric type texture to it, but that's not too bad. Again, we might have to take care of these ejector pins just in case these two pieces, when they glue them, glue them together, it might not fit, but it might be okay. But that's a nice simple sprue. And the last piece is the clear plastic. Again, I couldn't find any aftermarket masks or anything out for this. There probably is some out there, but I can't find any. So I'm going to have to do my own masking, which I'm never any good at. That's why I always buy the masks. But the uh, clear looks pretty good. It's a quite sharp canopy, so it's going to be not worried about too much distortion because it's not an oval canopy. It's one of those sharp angled ones. So here's the front, here's the main, and there's the back. The back one looks like it's got a little bit of um, fiber, um cobweb effect where the uh, two plastics meet together, but unfortunately nothing, nothing you can do about that. But the masking shouldn't be too difficult. You've got a cobweb effect on there as well. I don't know if you can see that on the side. But they don't look too bad, and a couple of lights. So there you are, my friends. Here's another kit from Ravel 148 scale Buckle Wolf TA154. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.